Hi everybody, this is Liam Martin from Running Remote. I usually do videos for company owners, but this video is specifically for individual workers that have been caught in the unfortunate situation of having to work from home in a forced capacity because of the secret situation that is currently happening right now. And if I say the word of that situation, unfortunately, this video will get demonetized. So I'm not gonna say it or it will get buried uh, as well because we usually don't monetize a lot of these videos. But uh, I've realized that this is the way to get the information past the ungodly YouTube uh, algorithm machine. So it's really important that you keep yourself mentally stable during this emergency so that you can stop the spread of that thing that I was mentioning before. Uh, so I have a couple tips. And again, some of these are quite simplistic. Uh, some of these are actually probably you've never heard about before. Uh, just to give you context, my name's Leah Martin. I run a tech company called timedoctor.com. I also am the co-organizer of Running Remote, which is the largest conference on building and scaling remote teams. We have 100 plus remote employees in 36 different countries all over the world. I know what I'm talking about. Don't worry, I got you. This is the video to watch if you are going to be working remotely and you wanna be able to stay mentally sharp. So tip number one, video communication is absolutely critical in my opinion towards your mental health when you are working remotely. You need to be able to keep communication with the outside world. Video is the best way to be able to do this. I have what I call Liam's hierarchy of communication, which is in person beats video, video beats audio, audio beats instant messaging, and instant messaging beats email. As you move up the chain, you become more synchronous, meaning there is more faster exchange of communication. As you move down the chain, you become more asynchronous, meaning there is less feedback loop time in terms of the speed of your communication. However, you are able to be a lot more productive inside of your work. So you need to re really be able to choose the right mix for you. Uh, realistically, for me, especially in this type of situation, get on video as much as humanly possible. Have that type of human interaction. It's going to do huge things for your mental health. Uh, you'll be able to see people face to face. Trust me, this is the way to go. Number two, you need to be able to create a clear workspace from social space inside of your work from home environment. So if you don't have an office, I have an office, in which case take your office, when you go into your office, close the door, literally put something on the door saying, I am working. Because a lot of people when they work from home, people don't think that they're actually working. Just tell everyone, when I go inside of this office and I close the door, consider me 100 miles away. You literally should be calling me on my phone in order to be able to call me for something. Because having that focused time is really important to be able to, number one, focus on your job, be able to get your job done, and number two, create a very clear divide between your workspace and your social space. If you don't have your own office, then what I would suggest is just setting up a small place inside of your house or apartment. So that might be a little desk area that you would work from in which you're not to be disturbed. I even at one point had a part of my couch that was only for work. So literally I would work only at that spot and if I was gonna get uh, someone that was gonna call me for a personal phone call, I would get up from that space, move over and take the call that way. I know that that sounds a little weird, but it's that mental shift that you need in order to be able to keep yourself mentally stable while you're gonna be working from home. Number three, you need to be able to know when you're going to clock in and clock out of work and make a very clear differentiation between those two states. So again, as I talked about in point two, creating a very clear workspace and social space, you need to also do that mentally. So when you go in for your workday, let's say you go from a nine to five as an example, you're going to go in and you're going to start your workday and then at five you're going to turn off all of your work devices. You're gonna turn off your, uh, your computer that's gonna have all your emails on it. You're going to either turn off your phone or you're going to stop instant communication 
from work through your phone. So I actually have an app on my phone that will stop sending me emails, anything work-related after 6 p.m. And that's been huge towards my mental health because I wanna really help divide myself from my workspace versus my home space. Getting rid of all of those little beeps and bops and interruptions that will bring up your anxiety throughout your evening and kind of feel like you're always working and you've never really disconnected is not gonna be good for your mental health. So make sure that you are disconnecting from work every single day. Number four, you need to be diligent about measuring your own mental health. So what does that mean? It means like get a lot of exercise, measure whether you are feeling mentally okay. Are you feeling a little depressed today? Are you feeling a little sad? Maybe you need to talk to HR about that. As quickly as possible is usually the best kind of solution to any type of mental health problem. So if you see these types of problems developing, go and talk to HR, go and talk to someone else, talk to a therapist. Uh, you'll be able to get that feedback and hopefully solve that problem as quickly as possible. A lot of people don't really understand how depression works. So depression is really a chemical state and you can fall into it. So you need to be able to make sure that you can get yourself out of it as quickly as possible. And a lot of people don't really recognize when they're in a state of depression. So it's important to be able to measure yourself almost weekly. Uh, I have something called the five minute journal, which is a little basically like physical journal that you can open up and you it has a, a little measure of like how good I feel today. And that's probably a pretty good way to be able to check in on a daily basis. So uh, have something like that. Uh, I'm sure there's apps out there that you can use to be able to measure where you're feeling and how you're feeling. And even kind of journaling about it can probably be quite useful as well as an early warning system that maybe you're not moving into a good mental state and you need to talk to somebody to hopefully get you out of it. Number five, uh, if you wanna hear more about this, we're actually gonna be running something called Remote Aid. So we've gotten a whole big group of remote work advocates and people that run massive remote companies, and they're all going to be doing an online event April 20th and it's by donation only. Everything is going to the Red Cross. Uh, not a penny is going to us. We're just putting this on completely for free. And this is something that, again, we unfortunately uh, had to postpone our physical conference. So we're doing this in its stead. And if you're a remote worker right now, you are feeling a little bit overwhelmed with what's currently happening. This is absolutely the event for you. Uh, you can check it out in the links down below or just Google running remote remote aid and you will be able to find the link. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the algorithm quite a bit. As I said before, I'm dealing with these like, the algorithm not really liking those certain words that we were talking about earlier in this video. So liking it, commenting down below and subscribing to this YouTube channel really helps out the algorithm and allows me to be able to get this messaging out to a lot more people. If you have any other questions, again, put them in the comments below, I'll be able to answer them. And hopefully I'll see you in the next video.